See what Marion was raving about when he came back from L.A. This show can be a real breakthrough for you, Sam. But you're going to have to help me get the word out. Kate Loomis from the newspaper is coming to interview you tomorrow. You need to be nice to her. There's a private showing. Yeah, uh, there's a private showing, and we have a dinner party for some collectors lined up. You're going to have a busy week. Hmm. Oh, I'm ready. You saw the invitation we sent out, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. We sent everybody in Dallas one of those, except Miss Molly Jones. I sent her one. Well, you weren't supposed to. I assume the last person on earth you wanted at your opening was Molly Jones. And you know how she feels about me. Bill, leave that alone. We'll do it in a minute. Mr. Perfectionist. Lisa, darling, I want you to take Sam over to my place and make sure he settles in, OK? I'll be uh, staying at Bill's this week, so you'll have it all to yourself. Now, I am way behind schedule, so you'll have to be on your own tonight. Uh, do you need a car? No, it'd be kind of fun to walk around the old neighborhood. Marion seems more tense than usual. Business has been awful. He says if your show doesn't do well, he may have to close the gallery. <laughs> Nothing like a little pressure to spice up an opening. If you need anything, just call me. I'll be um, at the gallery or the Camara Theater. You know where it is? Sure. What do you do there? I'm an actor. <laughs> We've got a show opening next week called Shadow Play. We're in kamikaze rehearsal mode right now. It's a good group. They kind of took me in when I moved to Dallas last year. Oh. Um, I had this in the car. It's the new tape that Molly and her band put out. You can borrow it if you promise to give it back. Thanks. Thanks for the ride, Lisa. See you later.
She's cool. She's kind of a bitch, but she's cool. She doesn't take shit from anybody. She's she the has hottest. It. Fuck it. She's cool. She's got it. You don't have to think you know about it. Molly. I know it. It's what it. All right. What did you want in California but couldn't get? I wanted a very deep and very sensitive quantum partner to poke a camera in my face. <laughs> Come here. Oh, damn. It's good to see you, Sam. I heard you were coming into town. What have you been up to? Still shooting on my epic Molly video. Found a couple of little Mollies to interview. And got on her shit list last night. But the girl's been abusing everybody and everything lately. Let me buy you a beer. Oh, I can't now. But I'll tell you what, come by and see me later, OK? All right, come on, girl. Show. Yeah, at the Stripe Gallery. How you doing, George? Still at Marion's? It's on Marion. I'm a free agent now. Yo, man, yo, man, you got this show on a fellowship. How do I get one of those? You have to apply for it. Yeah, but I mean, it's all politics, though, right? I mean, you got to know somebody on the inside. Like you, man. You can help me write a letter. <laughs> man, I would yeah, appreciate man, it. Get me away from this fucking house painting thing, man. I mean, you, you, you should come over. You should see my stuff, man. I'm working at something right. I, I'm working at something right now called the National Style, right? You know, people think Texas when they see your work's too regional. They think New York. All of a sudden, it's in the national interest. Got a shot. So full of shit. No, man. You know as well as I know, man. If an artist comes in with a Brooklyn accent, everybody's gonna drop their pants in the middle of the street, listen to what they're saying. You, you got like a regular Texas accent. You narrow your audience by fucking millions. What have you been up to these days? Making art. Can't all lay back on the left coast and fuck off. <laughs> you know, you ought to apply for one of those fellowships. They're into rough art out there. Yeah, I ain't going to nobody with my hand out. If they like my sculpture, they can buy it. If they don't, fuck them. George is a free enterprise guy. I know I mean to get out of town, to get a, a new perspective. So I can be named Flavor of the Month like you? Next month, wind up teaching at some pissant junior college somewhere. No thanks. Well, I missed you too, George. <laughs> How long are you in town? A week or so. Do me a big favor. What? Stay away from Molly. She don't want to see you. I think you're in an area where it's none of your fucking... No, you're wrong! It is my business. Look, I came here to show a few paintings. The last thing I want to do is have a fight with you over Molly. Now, that's ancient history. You still want to work with me Tuesday? Be in my place, early. But they, I will be there with Tinkerbells on. Where are you going? Work. Ever heard of that?
think we met a couple of years ago at some art opening. Yeah, sure. How's it going? I think we're supposed to be going to the same dinner party tomorrow night. Yeah, Marion mentioned that. You're a collector. My wife and I own some art. I give her my two bits worth of opinion, she writes the checks. <laughs> I used to be in the music business before I got married. I used to manage some of the top rhythm and blues groups in the country. Is that so? I love R&B. Yeah, I got a lot of friends up with the big labels. Been turning them on to Molly's music. I get a real kick out of helping an artist as talented as she is. She deserves it. She's paid some dues, all right. I better run. I got a club up the street I just opened. Why don't you stop up and have a drink while you're here? See you tomorrow night. Have you had any trouble coping with all this new success? Sam? Uh, I don't know how successful I am. I'm sure not rich. What would make you feel successful? 20 column inches and a nice photograph? Well, I think that uh, every artist should question whether what he's doing is valid. Is it true that this new work is all about your split with Molly Jones? Now, who told you that, Kate? You can trust me, Sam. What are you really feeling guilty about? What have you done that's so terrible? I've trusted people. Changed the loft much. I'm glad you still have this picture up. It's the only one I have at George. Yeah, uh, well, I saw him yesterday. Didn't realize how much I missed that asshole. I'm kind of pressed for time. I just wanted to return something that got mixed up in my stuff when I moved out. Every time I see that thing, I think about our gonzo trip down to Austin you, me, and George took. Remember who we bought that from? That wild-eyed hippie on 6th Street. Said I had to buy it for you. Wouldn't take no for an answer. Yeah, he said it'd bring me good luck. I don't think he was right, though. I've had the best year of my life without it. Why don't you keep it? You know, when I was in California, I thought about it a lot. Trying to figure out why things got so crazy. Really? I had better things to do with my time. You were just a kid when we met. I guess the teacher came out in me. I was trying to mold you in an image that I had in my mind. Like Dr. Frankenstein? 
I was just trying to show you how things were. George was, too. I learned a lot of things from you, Sam. I learned to duck when somebody swings at me, and I learned not to give anybody a second chance. I was a bit crazy then. Well, I'm a bit crazy now. And I think I like it that way. Molly, I feel responsible for you. It bugs the hell out of me that you're, you're burning the candle at both ends. I hate to see you get eaten up by your career. You're so full of shit. You see, I'm making it now, and you're jealous. Maybe so. I thought maybe I was over that. What's going on? Sam, meet Bobby Burke. He's a sax player from Austin. He's staying with me until he can find a place of his own. He's a great sax player, but a terrible housemate, aren't you, Bobby? George has a good heart, doesn't he? Yeah, well, if I catch you around here again, I'm gonna have to teach you some math. Well, I hope you have better luck than my mother did. Oh, hey, Bob! What's the matter with you, man? Tell him in the street, motherfucker. Next time, I'm gonna have to charge you. full of oil barons. Oh, yeah, who invited you? <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> we have a captive artist here. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about art. I was afraid you were going to say that. I've got to answer this page, Ed. Uh, sure, use the phone in my study. We're really looking forward to seeing your new work. I'm real proud of it. It's going to knock your panties off, Barbara. <laughs> there you go. Now, we've heard a lot about that painting of you and Molly Jones. That's the one I want to hear about. Well, look at the art and make up your own mind, Ed. My friend tells me an artist bears his soul on campus. If that's the case, he should be able to tell me what to look for. And knock your panties off, too. <laughs> I can hardly wait. <laughs> Two pairs in one day. <laughs> I'm sorry, honey, but there is a crisis at the club that I have to attend to. Oh, Ray. Don't we'll rush off. Well, don't, well, don't worry about it. Barbara. We'll take her home. Huh? Uh, thank you, Ed. Bye-bye. Thanks for a lovely meal. Mm. Mm. See you at the private showing on Wednesday. You won't be disappointed. Well, I'm looking forward to it. See you later, Ray. Sam? Mm -hmm. Maybe we should be going, too. Oh, no. It's no. early. No, no, no. They're not going anywhere. Not until I hear some juicy art gossip. <laughs> for instance, why are you artists so obsessed with young women? when there's so many more interesting choices around. No, that's not fair. Yeah, I'd be interested to hear the answer to that question myself. Good night, Sam.
I thought you were them and I hid. What happened? I don't know. I came back and I saw Bobby and I... I, I thought you were them and I hid. Who? Let go. Who'd you think I was? What are you doing? I can't stay here. Who killed Bobby, Molly? I've got to get out of here. Molly, you can't run away. you got to help me, Sam. Shh, shh, help me. shh. It's okay. It's okay. Don't let him get me. I won't. I won't. I won't. I won't. You've got to be calm, though. We gotta be calm about this. Come on, sit down over here. All right? I'm supposed to go to New York in two weeks. I can't now. You sit here. Everything will be all right. I'm gonna go make a call, and then we can wait for the police outside, okay? Stay at Marion's tonight. Hello, yes. Yes, I, I need to report a murder. Yeah, Samuel Webster. Samuel Xavier Webster. 2701 Elm Street. I'll be waiting outside. Damn. Must have been in shock. I shouldn't have left her alone. Adam Young, 1955. Okay. You used to live with Miss Jones. What are you now? Friends? Yeah. Something like that. Did you know that her housemate was a police character? No, I didn't. Bobby Burke had a long history of peddling cocaine. He must have still been at it, judging from what we found in the saxophone case. Give me some of that uh sweetness stuff, will you, Travis? How'd you feel coming back home and finding her living with this guy? I'm glad that she had somebody to live with her. It can get pretty weird now. Is she into weird stuff? Like dope and guns and shit like that? I don't know. You'll have to ask somebody else. I've been away for a while. Well, we need to find Miss Jones and talk with her. We'll use this list of friends you gave us, but more than likely we'll want to talk to you again. Fine. This is KL 58059. Sam, this is Barbara Carnes. It seems like all the Deep Ellen was talking about that awful scene last night. Ray called me from the club a while ago, and then Marion called me and asked me to check up on you. You must be worried sick about Molly. So if you need somebody to talk to, just give me a ring, okay? I got all the time in the world. Bye-bye. <laughs> We're not open yet. Is Ray in? I'm Sam Webster. I'm Jack Knight, Mr. Carnes' assistant. Do you want to leave a message? No. No, I just wanted to ask him about a mutual friend. Molly Jones? Yeah, we heard about that mess last night. I told the cops she shouldn't be hanging around that Bobby character. I mean, he had snakes all over him. Do you know him? I knew him. He's dead as a doornail now. Well, let me ask you this. Uh, is he a coke dealer, like they say? You bet he was. And Molly was his best customer. How do you know that? Part of my job is keeping my eyes and ears open at all times. Tell you what. Tell Ray that I'll see him at the gallery tomorrow night, OK? Mr. Carnes, you bet. Thanks.
No problem. Shall we talk some business? stack tonight, okay? Hey, we will try. We will run the whole first stack tonight. Oh. Sam, I heard about last night. Can I buy you a cup of coffee? It's what happened between you two. It's a long story. I think Molly likes secrets. And so do you. I think you both play your cards a little close to the vest. If you ask me, that's... I didn't ask you. If you ask me, that's why y'all had so much trouble. Neither one of you would tell each other what you're really thinking. Sam, why don't you talk to James? You know Molly's guitar player? Where can I find him? You know that huge green building over on Expo? Yeah. I hear you, he's living there, at least till they run him out. Whoa, James, it's me. Sorry, Sam. You can't be too careful these days, can you? What are you doing here, man? I like the acoustics. Trying to find out where Molly is. Yeah, so are the cops. What'd you tell them? Well, I didn't tell them shit, because I don't know shit. You think Bobby was killed over a dope deal, like they say? <sighs> Bobby just wanted to make music, man. He quit that other yeah, when he joined our band. I don't know, man. They found a lot of coke on him. He had a fondness for it. Poor Bobby. Problem kid. Just born to lose, I guess. First he gets his ass fired, then he gets shot through the heart. What do you mean, fired? Oh, Molly gave us all notice yesterday. Told Bobby to move out. Why? Oh, she signed with a record company one of Ray Carnes' buddies runs. Probably replaced us all with a bunch of New York industrial faggots. How did Bobby take it? Hard, man. Took it hard. We worked long and hard getting that band tight. You know, I'd heard about Molly's deal. 